But just keep this in mind. This is a very, very important point. Like we talked about in the weekend video, right? The cheat code is, the cheat hack is. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com uh, nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is doing well. Hope everybody had uh, a wonderful three-day weekend and hope everybody did, did well trading today. So uh, again, as, as this movie continues, uh, now we are day six, right? We're day six uh, underneath the 50-day moving average on the NASDAQ 100. We are day three on the S on the IWM and we are day, let's see here, one, two, three, four, five on the SPY. So the, the narrative hasn't changed, right? It's, it's very, very tough to kind of spin what's going on here. Uh, we lost the 50 day, we're building below the 50 day and the longer we stay below the 50 day and get comfortable with the 50 day, more, uh, more stocks are going to continue to get lower. Again, the bulls need to, uh, need to wake up. They need to, you know, start at least taking out the previous day's high to kind of start making a stand again it's not going to take one it's not going to be one day uh, that the bulls are just going to literally take an engulfing candle and take away all the selling that we've seen here for the last week but they have to really start getting into baby steps and the you know the more days go by it's literally the same thing again the market gaps up the market gets stuffed into supply and the market goes red at some times and it's the same movie over and over and over again and and people start seeing futures green in the morning they you know they think they think this is it this is the reversal and it's not reversals it's very very tough to get a reversal um if you are gapping into supply okay Re reversals usually come when people can't take it anymore okay when retail public are sitting there the night before and they're like i can't believe the nasdaq is down again i can't believe my positions are down again how can the video be down 17 days in a row? How can Microsoft continue to go that way? Well, yeah, that's that's what a bear scenario is. The only way uh, you can get a true, at least a dead cat bounce. I don't I don't want to use the word reversal, but at least if you're looking for a dead cat bounce, uh, you you have to have one major event happening, and it's not a gap up, right? What we've seen now for the last five six days, literally every single time, uh, including Thursday, including Friday, including this morning. Any single time you get a gap up in the futures pre-market, for some reason, people are buying stocks pre-market like it's the last day on earth uh, and they, they get stuffed into supply. That's what happens when you lose demand, right? Demand becomes supply. So what happens? <laughs> people start buying stocks into supply. Emotional buyers meet technical sellers. Emotional sellers, excuse me, emotional, uh, emotional buyers will lose 90, you know, 95 out of 100 times. And that's what happens over and over and over again. What, what needs to happen to get a little bit of a real kind of a relief rally, right? And, and again, it's something that you have to be conscious for because again, ever since I, you know, we started talking about the, the loss of the 50 day moving average, I keep on reiterating the point, the market's not gonna go straight down. It feels like it's going straight down. The value, it seems like it's going straight down, but, but we all know, again, just the same way stocks can't go straight up when there's a bullish tape, right? Just like we had uh, when we reclaimed the 50 day moving average, there's, there were definitely days the markets took some profits the same way, right? The same way the market can't sh go straight down. Eventually sellers get tired, but for the sellers to get tired, a, a major occurrence needs to happen. And that is called throw the baby out with the bathwater, which basically means if Mr. Jones is looking at his account today and he's long in the video at, two, at, at uh, I don't know, 300, and he looks at his account today and he goes, I can't believe this thing's at 134. That's it. If it goes down again tomorrow, I'm gonna watch this thing tomorrow. If this thing goes down again tomorrow, I'm gonna be out. And Mr. Jones and then Mr. Smith and Mr. Williams, and the next thing you know, it's a domino effect. You have a whole bunch of retail public. They just cannot take the pain anymore. They're, they're, they're long at levels that are so high up, they, they can't even fathom that the, the, the market can, can recover this, their money can recover as well. So that's called sell first, ask questions later. If the bulls want to rally, and again, nobody knows what the hell's going to happen tomorrow. But if the bulls want to rally, the last thing they continue to want to see is gap up in futures. You don't want to see that. What you want to see is down five, 600 points on the Dow, down three, 400 points on the NASDAQ, literally have Mr. Jones wake up and go, that's it, sell my stock at any price. I don't care what price, sell my stock at any price, 
F this market, F everybody else in it. I'm going back to Bitcoin. That's a whole different story. I'm just joking around, of course, right? And everybody needs to sell at once. They need to sell pre-market lows. They need to establish something called shorting into the hole. New, sell, new uh, short sellers come in uh, at disadvantageous prices. And next thing you know, you have a snowball effect and that is called throw the baby out with the bathwater. At some point, 10, 11 o'clock, they reverse and then they start going red to green. That's what the bulls need. Until that happens, it's very, very tough to get a gap and go market when everything is sitting at supply. Matter of fact, we saw today when everything was when everything was green. All, all I kept on saying, you know, the, 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 at morning strategy all through the first half hour of the day, I don't want to buy anything. I don't want to buy anything. I don't want to buy anything. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Things will get you know. Things will get comfortable. Things will get comfortable. Things will get comfortable. And next thing you know, things start selling off. And that's exactly what happened today. How do you get this damn thing down, by the way? Anyway, so and that's exactly what happened today here. You, you know, the, the last thing you want is a scenario that you are forced to do anything. And I've always made main, maintained the, 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 um, the position of on the way up, right? You want to make sales when you want to, not when you have to. On your way down, you want to control risk, right? You want to, if you're especially a long, uh, a long bias bull, you want to control risk. You don't want to be told that when you need to sell stock, you want to make sales. You want to make proper reads. And that's exactly what happened the first day that the NASDAQ 100 closed below the 50-day moving average. It, it wasn't a scenario of great call. This is what happened next. It was a scenario of, oh my God, this is where we are again after we were seeing where we were the first time here. Here is my job to prepare, right? Here is my job as an investor, as a trader, to kind of take off the rose-colored glasses and stop saying, well, I hope my stock recovers well, now my next question is, well, what do I do if it doesn't? And that's where the 50-day came in, and that's where we are six days lower. Now, again, is it possible at any day we have a relief rally? Absolutely. But if the bulls want to really have a snowball chance in hell, right, to actually sustain a dead cat rally for maybe one day, maybe you know, spill over the next day, there needs to be violence. The market needs to wake up and choose violence. Your stocks need to be sold off very, very aggressively at the open and short sellers get trapped opening range lows only to turn around red to green, yada, yada, yada. And hopefully you get that big move down. But just in case there is you know, some sort of relief rally, and again, I would say Look, looking at my uh, list for tomorrow, uh, yeah, look, 95% of what I'm watching tomorrow is back to the downside because that's kind of where the trend is. This is where we continue to see value. But is it is it is it really crazy to say if we do rally, maybe look at a, maybe look at a Lululemon, right? Lululemon had a good earnings report, right? Had a really good earnings report. Held this bottom range here. So if we do rally again, don't you have to be prepared on both sides? If you do rally, don't you want to go with the one that is at least viable, that at least had a catalyst, that at least didn't sell off with the rest of the market sell off? So again, you don't need a hundred stocks to be right on the long side. All you need is one. And if Lulu starts getting above this channel here in the next day or so, if we do have some sort of relief rally, again, it's it's a name you definitely want to uh, keep an eye on. But the common denominator, again, that was for, for Wednesday, for Thursday, to Friday, today, it's still the same thing. Stocks losing their 50-day moving average, stocks confirming their 50-day moving average, and they continue to get sold. And that's exactly where I'm hoping the value continues to be tomorrow. But again, if things turn around and there's channels to be to the upside, you know, we'll be there again because we're, we're prepared and that's the most important thing. And that's the only thing you can ask for yourself. Be prepared, stay re prepared. Because again, you have to have the ability to ship. But just keep this in mind. This is a very, very important point. Like we talked about in the weekend video, right? The cheat code is, the cheat hack is, above the 50 long, below the 50 short. But there's a very, very simplistic second alternative to everything that we talk about, which is as important. The only way a stock can go higher, and I've repeated this a hundred times, but it's, there's a lot of new viewers. The only way a stock can go higher, the market can go higher, the market needs to take out the previous day's highs. That's, that's it. You, there's no possible way on God's green earth or any earth or any planet or any solar system that the market could go higher, the stock can go higher if it doesn't take out the previous day's high. And there's no way a stock can go lower if it doesn't take out the previous day's low and builds below those levels. And that's exactly what we saw today. Uh, some really good aggressive value again at the open. And then the market pretty much did nothing for the rest of the day. It just drift up, drift down, drift up, drift down. But that's exactly what a sell bias market is. It's the initial aggression based on the previous day's research. 
and then it drifts, right? There's absolutely nothing. That's why I've always said, and what we keep on reiterating this point in the webinar, you have a window, right? You have a window of opportunity from 9.30 in the morning to about one o'clock Eastern time, and then you go through a dead zone, channels contract, and then you're gonna churn yourself an account, your, your, your account if you decide to keep on pressing and pressing and trading, trading in the afternoon. There's something I've always said, if you like a setup uh, in the afternoon, you're going to love the same setup uh, in the morning. So let's talk about today's session. Again, very uh, aggressive session today. Uh, again, we, you know, we talked about uh, same levels over and over and over again. Uh, Tesla, again, held that 266 level. It pierced it for a second, went down to two, what is it, 265.75, right? So for all intents and purposes, held that 266 level. Again, that's going to be the line in the sand for the next few days. We did see some aggressive put buying continue to come in some size buyers continue to come in for the 960 excuse me 965 265 uh weeklies one after another after another heavy uh really really heavy uh, buying coming in uh, all the morning let's see if, if it starts to confirm at some point uh in the next couple of days starbucks not a big move at all 52 50 82 if it builds below can flush here was starbucks not a big move at all it went down like what 30, 40 cents, right? Here comes the 82.50, 82, went down to 81.67. Again, not a big move before it reversed. Um, Honeywell, again, we talked about Honeywell on the weekend update, 186 if it builds below can flush through the 50 day. Again, not a big move, but again, it's a move, right? It's a move. It lost the 50 day, uh, went down about two bucks is the lowest close in the whole formation. If it starts losing back that uh, 184 in the next few days, uh, it can go lower. You know, nothing, nothing crazy there. Uh, ZS stopped right at that 142 level. Guys, set an alert on the ZS. Uh, again, that 142 is, is held now twice. If it starts building, it could, it could get lower. Uh, CSX did absolutely nothing. Never even came close to that 31 level. So just keep setting an alert here. Uh, FAST, that $50 level was a big, big level. You know, they keep some, they kept on defending that level here. And you can see it now five times in a row, man, they defending that 50 level. This is still, this is still a work in progress here, but if this thing starts building below that 50, it's going to get hit. Never got there. Uh, Apple, uh, 154.67 for builds below can flush. There is an Apple event for tomorrow. Uh, not a big move, right? Not a big move on Apple. You'll, you'll see the, the big moves in a second. But it started losing the 54 change area. Went down about a dollar. And then that Bollinger Bell held up. So we still have to watch it for tomorrow. But there is an iPhone event. Uh, Meta, 159.20. If it builds below, can flush. Uh, uh, excuse me, I skipped over Amazon. Uh, Amazon, 126.30, 126. If it builds below, can flush. Here was Amazon. Uh, went down into the 124. Is another name. Uh, short-term expiration, uh, they, they, you know, they were coming for the 125s, the 120s. So it's another, again, if the market continues to weakness, I want to watch this thing below today's channel again. Uh, Meta 59.20, if it builds below, can flush. Here's Meta, right? Here's Meta. You know, they were pulling these things. You know, not that super crazy, but they were pulling them. Here's the 159.20, went down to 157 and change. I still like this thing. Uh, for tomorrow if they continue to uh, take down the stock. Uh, this was definitely the big move here. We were watching, uh, we were watching usually Netflix, for, for Netflix to get really aggressive, it needs option flow, right? Just because it's not as the, it's the thickest stock in the world. They, th there was a guy who came in for the October 210 puts, about $959,000 worth of premium. And this is what, what really took down the stock. I thought it had a shot to, to 13. It got down to like 14 and change. Uh, ironically, well, not ironically, but it, this is, you know, nice move. I mean, really, really nice, nice move. I thought it was gonna get down to this 1350 level. It stopped in the 1450 level. If it starts losing that 13, man, this thing's gonna get hit. So keep an eye on this thing. Usually institutional, you know, option flow comes in. They, they get really, really aggressive if they continue to start build. So nice move on Netflix. And that's it, that's it. So I, I think we're set up, right? Again, the last thing you want to do, right? The last thing you really, really want to do is concentrate on overextended names, right? Like the Microsofts, the NVIDIAs. Yeah, they can go lower, but the value is shrinking. Every single day, the longer it's uh, away from its 50-day moving average, the higher probability those are the need the stocks that they're going to reverse first. So be very, very wary on that. You want to watch stocks that are close, tight to their 50-day moving average. So if they lose their channel and they reclaim, the losses are pennies instead of the losses of dollar. Again, remember the old adage. Again, if you're going to jump, 
jump from the first floor, not from the 10th. Uh, quick announcement tomorrow, the gentleman, uh, Kyler, who uh, edits uh, all these videos does a phenomenal, phenomenal job. He will be traveling tomorrow. So just a heads up, there is no video tomorrow. The video will resume again on Thursday. Guys, have a great afternoon. Have a blessed day and I'll see you all tomorrow. Take care.